friends. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. It's January 2023 and this is my first video of the year. January is kind of a weird month, right? Like I take all the Christmas stuff down and then what do you do? Do you decorate for winter? Do you decorate for Valentine's Day? Do you just go back to normal decorations? I usually like to decorate for winter, but I do like to go back to some of my normal decorations. So today I have some winter Dollar Tree DIYs that I'm really excited to share with you, but some of them I'm gonna explain how you could turn them into everyday decor too. By the way, if you're new here, my name's Jess. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. I'm really excited to get crafting. I hope you are too. Let's get started. I wanted to create a really pretty riser to hold a candle or another piece of decoration. I grabbed some wood beads, some small wooden snowflakes, and one of these large wooden snowflakes and some wooden shapes, all from the Dollar Tree. Before painting my snowflake, I took a small amount of the Dollar Tree spackling and I filled in the hole at the top of the snowflake. I wouldn't need that because I was going to use this as a riser now instead of hanging it up. After the spackle had dried and I smoothed it out, then I got to work giving the snowflake one coat of white chalk paint. I also grabbed four of those wooden shapes that I had. These are in the shape of snowmen, but I'm actually going to use them as the feet for my riser. I gave those a coat of the white ch chalk paint also. If you don't have wooden shapes like this, you could always use more wooden beads. You could either do one wooden bead or you could even stack two or three of them together to make your riser the height that you like. Because of the odd shape of the snowflake, I couldn't really glue four of the snowman just in the four corners because there are no corners. So what I did is I'm going to glue three of them in a triangle shape around the outside prongs of the snowflake and then the fourth one I'm going to glue in the center. That way, whatever I place on my riser will have a little more stability by having one of those little snowman in the center. And you can see here too, with my paint job, I left some of the wood color from the snowflake show through because I like that distressed look, but if you like more of a clean modern look, you could do more of a full coverage or even several coats of paint. As a second decorative element to my riser, I decided to create a small wood bead garland that could be looped around a candle or some other kind of a vase or pitcher. I had a baggie of two different sizes of wood beads, so I strung them on until I had the length that I liked. To finish off the ends of my wood beads, I made a tassel using my sanding block and some jute twine. I wrapped it around about 20 times. I cut it in the center and then the two ends of the wood beads I tied together to form the tassel. Once I had all of the strings tied onto the wood beads, then I went down about an inch from where I tied it on and tied another piece of twine around to finish it off. And then as a second decorative element, which you don't have to do this part, I decided to hot glue on one of my wooden snowflakes. That way it really made it more for winter, but if you wanna keep something like this up year round, you could just leave the tassel plain. I'm sure you have a few Amazon boxes laying around or other cardboard boxes from the online shopping you did over the holidays. I grabbed one of those boxes and I cut a piece down to 10 by 14 and I also grabbed some of this burlap fabric from Walmart and some burlap ribbon and then some winter greenery. I cut a piece of that burlap fabric so that it was about two inches wider and longer than the piece of cardboard I had cut. And then starting with my glue gun, I just started wrapping the burlap fabric around the piece of cardboard. Now, because this is a looser weave of burlap, I had to be really careful because that hot glue wanted to seep out through the fabric itself. So I just took my time here. I laid a bead of hot glue down, folded the fabric over, and then I'm using my little spatula to make sure that I don't burn my fingers. After I had the top and the bottom glued in place, then I cut a bit of the extra fabric off the corners to make sure that it wouldn't be bulky, and I was able to glue the sides in as well. Now that my piece of cardboard was all covered in burlap, I took a second piece of that burlap fabric and the sides of this fabric are binded. So I'm using that binded part to be the top of my pocket. I cut another piece that was about two inches wide wider than the cardboard and I left a little two inch gap on the bottom so that I would have enough material to wrap up around the cardboard to form the pocket. 
I did the same technique where I started with my hot glue and I made sure that I was using my spatula to, so that I wouldn't burn my fingers when that hot glue was seeping through. And I hot glued that pocket onto the cardboard. Once my pocket was secured in place, then I took that burlap ribbon and about halfway down the pocket on the back side of the cardboard, I glued a piece of ribbon on one side. I stretched it across the front. I didn't place any hot glue on the front because I didn't want to see it through that ribbon. And then I hot glued it onto the other side to create a band across the front of the pocket. Using that same burlap ribbon, I created a simple double bow. I looped together two pieces of that burlap and then I used a third piece to cinch the two loops together in the center. And you can see I tucked my silicone mat inside of the pocket so that when I hot glued my bow to the front of the pocket, that hot glue wouldn't seep through onto the back of the pocket and seal it shut. Next, I'm using my crocodile tool, which is basically an industrial strength paper punch. It really works good on cardboard. It's easy to punch through to make a hole. And I created two holes at the top of my pocket, one on each side so that I could fish some twine through so that I would have a way to hang my pocket. If you don't have a crocodile, you probably could just poke through with a screwdriver or something like that. But I will leave this tool linked in the description box in case you are interested in getting one. Before I started filling my pocket, I decided to finish off the back. I grabbed a piece of felt that's basically the same color as the cardboard, and I hot glued that onto, onto the back just to hide those rough edges. You could also use a second piece of burlap here or even another piece of cardboard. But like I said, I happen to have this felt, and then that way if I'm hanging it up on my door, I don't have to worry about any of those rough edges scratching my door or my window. Now this pocket can be used year round. It definitely doesn't have a holiday or a theme to it. So to make mine look a bit more wintry, I gathered up some of my favorite winter greenery pieces that had some snow and everything on them. And I just tucked them into the pocket. I recently bought an electric fireplace for our living room and I love creating garlands to hang across the front of it. I grabbed a pack of these wooden snowflake ornaments, some mini clothespins, some of this chenille yarn from the Dollar Tree, one of the Dollar Tree's pom-pom makers, and some white felt. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but this white felt actually has a bit of glitter on it, which I'm not usually a big glitter fan, but this glitter is okay because it doesn't get everywhere. I marked on one side of my felt two dots that were four inches apart and then on the other side I started two inches in and marked another four inches. So on one side I have two dots, on one side I have three, and now all I have to do is connect the dots with my rotary cutter to create some triangle or pennant shapes. And you can see here from one piece of felt because of how I staggered out the triangles I'm actually going to get four pennants. The garland that I'm creating is going to have two layers to it. So I started with a piece of that chenille yarn that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just ran a small bead of hot glue along the back of the pennant and I laid the yarn in place on it. So you can see here the, the yarn that you're seeing, this is actually the back side of the pennant. Since there were eight wooden snowflakes in that pack, I went ahead and created eight of the triangles all together and I left just a small gap in between each one as I was gluing it down. I would say no more than an inch because I needed um, enough room to get all eight of them across the front of my fireplace. After my triangles were glued on, I flipped it back to the front and I'm using those mini clothespins to attach the snowflakes. This worked out really well because there is a little hole at, at the top of the snowflakes. So this way the clothespin covered up that hole and you couldn't see it. This is also a great way to be able to change this out for the different seasons and the holidays. Since I didn't glue the snowflakes on, I'm using the clothespins. I can take those off later and add in something else, maybe some flowers or even some wooden Easter eggs too once we get closer to Easter. For the second layer on my garland, I'm using the largest pom-pom maker that you can get at the Dollar Tree. This one is sold in a pack by itself, and then I've also seen where they have a small and a medium-sized one in a pack together. These are really easy to use. They do have some directions on the back if you've never used a pom-pom maker before, but using that same chenille yarn, I started at one end and I'm wrapping it around until it seems like it's full enough and I can't see any of the plastic through it. I close it and then you just start wrapping on the other side until you have about the same amount of thickness as you did on the first side. 
Once you close that side up, then there's a channel around the center that your scissors fit into and you can cut all of the little strings apart to create your pom-pom. Before you take the plastic piece apart, you wanna make sure that you tie another piece of yarn through the center of that channel so that your pom-pom doesn't fall apart. And then you just take both sides of the pom-pom maker apart and you are left with your pom-pom. Now I left the tails on my pom-pom from where I tied it into the center so that I would have a way to tie my pom-pom to the, the chenille piece of yarn that I'm gonna hang as my second banner. And whenever I was tying them on, I made sure that I didn't tie it too tight so that once I had that second garland hung up, I could slide the pom-poms around and space them out evenly. One trend I've been noticing on Pinterest is to create different textured backgrounds for frames and layering them with a sign. I grabbed an 8x10 canvas from the Dollar Tree, two other pieces of box art, one of these adhesive wall tiles and some fabric, and I also created a decal using my Cricut, but if you don't have one, don't worry, I'll give you other ideas for that. I removed all of the hardware from the frames and that canvas, the 8x10 canvas, I went ahead and removed the canvas material from that frame as well. Now that my frames have been prepped and ready to paint, I'm using three different colors, a white chalk paint, a black chalk paint, and the Antique Wax by Waverly. I painted the largest frame in the white, the medium sized one in the black, and then the smallest one I gave a coat of stain all over using a baby wipe to apply that Antique Wax. I'm using that self-adhesive wall tile as the background for my medium piece of box art. I measured the inside of the box art itself so that I would know how big of a piece of this tile I needed to cut. And because there was a slight pattern to this tile, I kind of laid the box out on top of it to decide where in that pattern I would like the best. And then I actually used my paper trimmer to cut this down to size. This self-adhesive wall tile, the adhesive part is actually a second layer. So once you make an initial cut on it, you can slide your finger under it and just pull off the decorative part. You don't need to keep that adhesive part on there. Once I had my piece cut down to size, I used some of that same white chalk paint and I dry brushed very lightly over the surface. This gave it a distressed look and it also made the pattern on the tile pop out a bit more. For the largest canvas piece, I cut a piece of cardboard down that would fit on the back of the frame. I'm using some double-sided tape to lay my fabric down over the cardboard. I didn't want to use hot glue because I was afraid you would see the lines and the bumps from the hot glue itself once it dried on the fabric. And I also was afraid that the hot glue would actually seep through the fabric. And because this isn't something that's going to be handled much, I figured the double-sided tape would hold it just fine. Once I had the fabric all glued down in place, I cut off all of the excess material. Then I did use some hot glue to reattach the fabric covered piece of cardboard to the back side of the frame. I also used a small amount of hot glue to adhere that piece of tile to the inside of the medium frame. And for the smallest frame, I did create that decal using my Cricut. If you don't have a cutting machine, you could always just hot glue in a small wooden shape like one of those wooden snowflakes, or you could even use some window cleans, or even a really cute greeting card would make a great thing to put in the center. Now here's where you can change it up for the different seasons. So obviously. I'm doing winter decor so I created a sign that said hello winter but if you wanted to you could use the other two background pieces as they are year-round and then just change out this little front side for the different holidays and seasons depending on the time of year. I have quite the collection of bottle brush trees and some of them I wanted to keep up after Christmas. I wanted to create a cute little crate slash tray to keep them in and display them for the winter. I grabbed two of these wooden crates from the Dollar Tree and I popped a side off of each one. They're pretty easy to pull apart. You can see I just used my hands to 
pull apart one side. I did keep those extra two pieces though because I'll use those for a little stability. I added some hot glue so that I could glue one tray to the other one and then those two pieces that I pulled off I glued over top of the seam both on the inside and the outside of the crate. This way I didn't have those ends in the middle to block putting on some extra trees and it was one open crate. After my tray was all hot glued together, I'm using some white chalk paint and I'm painting the whole thing top, bottom, inside, outside, just to make sure that it had a nice cohesive look. After that white paint was dry, I went back through it with some gray paint and a chippy brush and I started distressing all of the corners and the edges of the whole tray. Keep an eye out in the Dollar Tree for these rolls of faux leather. They usually have them in the supplies that you would normally use with a Cricut or other type of cutting machine, but you definitely don't need one of those to use this. I laid a piece of the black faux leather out and I'm cutting strips that are about two inches wide. This is gonna cover up that little star opening that was on the side of the trays. If that's not something that bothers you, if you like that star shape, then you could leave it as is, but I decided to create a little leather band to cover that hole up. One strip was enough to cover both sides. So like I said, I cut a strip that was two inches. I added a little hot glue to the inside of the crate and I just wrapped it around and hot glued it on the bottom. And then I repeated that on the second side as well. I happen to have these black wooden beads in my stash, so I decided to use these as little feet for my tray. This definitely is optional. I think the tray would look nice just sitting flat on the table, but because of that centerpiece that I used to brace the tray together where those two seams met, I, it felt just a tad wobbly to me, so that's why I decided to go ahead and add the feet on the bottom. Now this is where you could stop if you wanted to leave this as an everyday piece of decor, but I wanted to make mine a little more wintry and I also wanted to cover up that seam where the two trays met. So I have three of these mini wooden snowflakes. I gave them a quick coat of the black chalk paint and I glued three across the front of my tray. If you don't wanna add the snowflakes to your tray, but you still wanna cover up that seam, I would recommend using some spackling in that seam area before you start painting. I think it would camouflage it enough, especially if you're going to be doing the distressing like I did. Um, had I thought ahead, I probably would have done that, but I actually really like how these snowflakes look and I'm glad I have a nice winter piece to display my bottle brush trees. Thanks for coming to craft with me today. I left some videos on the screen that I think you might like. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.